Island's west coast is full of amazing fishing opportunities. In the South Island they have hard fighting sea round browns that chase the delectable white bait up the rivers. Here is your white bait omelette served on a silver platter. Fishing off the west coast you can find huge schools of tuna and Kirk has a ball chasing them on the wave runner. Oh he's running at me. Look at the size of that. The west coast is renowned for rough seas and wild coastline. The mighty Buller River runs into the sea at Westport. During the annual whitebait season, brown trout, known as sea runs, will travel right to the mouth of the river to chase the little transparent baitfish. And this is where I've joined fishing guide Anton Donaldson. You just can't go past this black and gold toby. Catches so many fish. The whitebait run into the river as the tide is rising, and this is the time to look for sea run browns. We started by casting a spinner, which is one of the easiest ways to fish for these trout. Sea run browns have an average weight of about two kilos, but can reach sizes well in excess of five kilos. Yeah, so what I'm doing here is I'm just throwing the black and gold toby out and across the current, and um, giving it a few seconds to sink down steadily retrieve it back towards myself. Feels very fishy this spot. Go on there Anton. Yeah. So uh, just hit too far out, followed a long way in. Feels like an okay fish, to be honest. Yeah, they just come out of nowhere, don't they? They do. Been standing at the spot casting for 10 or 20 minutes, so there we go. Yeah, he's a nice freshie, isn't he? Yeah. Got that silver colour that we like. So a lot of people don't realise how close to the sea that trout will come, eh? Yeah. It's a really nice fish, Adam. Yeah. The old black and gold toby bait. Yeah, they work very well. Hey. Awesome. That's good, first for the day. Look very at the good. colours on yeah. that. Beautiful. It'll be fresh in from the sea following the white bait up. Brown trout that have been feeding on white bait can be good eating, but Anton lets this one go. Yeah, well, it's good to get on so quickly. It was um, good fun. Um, yeah, no, there's, there's no substitute for those black and gold tobies. The tide started pushing in and the white baiters were all getting a feed. It's funny how some people say that a river has moods, because it was so peaceful here and we were just a short distance from the raging west coast. I just saw a rise and I've grabbed the fly rod and um, I've run over here and thrown one cast out there and this trap chased the um, white bait right into the shallows. The quality of a trout can vary greatly. A fresh fish will be bright and silver and have plenty of condition. Yeah, now that's a nice fish. It's a really nice fish. So he's taking a little grey ghost fly. Turn him around so you can see the fly there. Looks just like a white bait, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, that'll go really nice in the smoker. Should have nice pink flesh. There's the fly. Perfect white bait imitation. A little bit of flash. 
Anton's caught a couple of lovely sea run trout. The morning's been fantastic. We've had a bit of rain, but it's just eased off and the sun's come up. We've just walked up the river because it's high tide and the trout have gone off the bite. But we've run into lovely young Sally here who's white baiting quite successfully. And we said, Sally, we've got a couple of eggs in the car. Can you help us out? And she said, no worries, boys. You can have a few of my white bait. So we're going to cook up a white bait omelette for lunch. How good does this get? Look at that, eh? Oh, wow. Yeah, look at that. There are so many ways to cook white bait. I don't profess to be an expert at cooking them. I'm pretty good at eating them. But when you're on a place like this, simple is the best. So what we're gonna do is just crack a couple of eggs into a, a bowl, put some fresh, fresh white bait, salt and pepper, chuck in a pan, make a white bait omelet. Doesn't get much simpler than that, but I tell you what, it's gonna be delicious because they've just come out of the river. White bait are the only fish that can be caught and sold by amateur fishermen. So good spots are closely guarded and meeting wonderful people that are always happy to share their catch and their stories is what West Coast hospitality is all about. Fresh white bait. Look at that, kicking. Oh, still kicking. Oh, they're going for a swim. <laughs> Cooking outside with ingredients fresh out of the water is one of my favorite things to do when I go fishing. Oh, this is gonna be the best, best omelet in the world. Thanks, Sally. Want some more, Ann? Ah, a little bit, yeah. It's all about the white bait, eh? Yeah. Go, <laughs> <Sorry>, Mr. Sir. <laughs> Righto, the pan's hot. In with the white bait. Get all those tasty little beauties. Because we're making an omelette, we stir it around a bit. Get the edges off. The egg's just about fully set now, and it's just about time to roll up our omelette. Give it a bit of a flip. Oh, look at that. Yeah, just give it a minute or so just to set off, and then we're away eating our white bait. Here wow, is your that. white bait omelette served on a silver platter. Beautiful, <laughs> thank you. Very Tuck much. into that. Look at that, eh? <laughs> See if, I, see if I pass West Coast uh, white bait cooking school. You want to pass? Oh, you go first. Tell me. You're the expert. <laughs> no, you go first. Okay. Oh. Oh, oh. Even if I cook to myself, I'm allowed to say it's good. Yeah, bloody good cook, my mate. You can't pack it next to you. <laughs> Have a try first. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Coming up, Kirk has an amazing adventure chasing tuna off the Manukau Bar. Nice albacore around the five kilo mark. Okay, my task today is to head out through the Manukau Bar. I'm gonna head out to about the 60, 70, 80 meter mark just troll some lures around, see if I can't pick up some albacore on some light tackle, be a bit of fun. Reasonably nice day wind-wise, not so nice rain-wise. So hopefully the rain clears, and we'll get into some good fish. Okay, sure, 021674. When you're heading through a bar, one of the key things to do is always call Coast Guard. You've got to let them know when you're going out, and then you've got to let them know when you're through the other side. If you don't let them know when you're through the other side, they're going to come looking for you. So I've put in my call to Coast Guard, I've let them know I'm on my way out, and once I get out the other side, I'll give them a call, let them know I'm safe. Now I'll clear the bar, and we'll be working the 90 metre mark outside the bar. Over. I'm at about the 60 metre mark. Still raining, unfortunately, but nice enough weather. Got a couple of lures out the back. I'm just trolling at about seven knots. Heading kind of west, northwest. Can't see land behind me, so I'm hoping the GPS holds out for the day. Pretty reliable, though, the Lawrence. And I'm just going to cruise the contour lines, cruise from somewhere between 60, 70, 80 metres. Look for a good sign, look for birds, look for fish. See what happens.
lure I'm going to use today is this purple one. It's got a weighted head which keeps it under the water. I'm going to run it a long way back so that it's out of the wake and it won't pop out of the water. It'll just sit down nicely under the water about 50 metres back. So let's drop it in now and get going. When I'm setting the lures on the wave runner, I like to press the no wake mode button. And what that does is that gives me hands free, just a slow cruise at about four knots. And that means the ski will go in a nice straight line or pretty straight line and lets me get some things sorted while I'm putting the lure out. So, let's have a bit of a troll, see what we can catch. Fish on, fish on. Really took it with a big, big run. Wind's getting up a little bit now. Got him on. He's been swimming at the ski for most of the fight so far. I would expect that as he gets a little bit closer, oh, there we go, he'll do a run. And that's a nice run. That's why these things are so great to fish for on light tackle. Such great fighters. Gaffs in. And look at that. Nice albacore around the five kilo mark. Good start to the day. Okay, I'm approaching an area that's very fishy. There's a few birds around. Had a hook up here already. So I'm gonna call it Tuna Alley. Here we go, we're hooked up. Exactly the same place as the last one. Exactly the same place. I was just looking at the GPS thinking we must be getting close to that point. We're only about 100 metres away from it. So that's the benefit of marking those spots in the middle of nowhere. You think you're in the middle of nowhere, but those fish are feeding on something. So they're obviously holding here. Oh, he's running at me. Tuna are really fast. Right up high in the water, coming at me. Here he comes, he's a nice one. And we've got him. Look at the size of that. It's about a six or seven kilo albacore, this one. Beautiful fish. I've bled him, gonna put him on the icy tech on the ice, chill him down straight away. What a beauty. The thing that surprises me most about this type of fishing is A, it's right on my back doorstep effectively. The Manukau is about a 40 minute trip from my house to where I launched this morning at Clark's Beach. Easy launch, straight out through the bar. Within 10 minutes through the bar, you're fishing, catching albies. And what amazes me is I've never done it before. I don't know why, I just never have. So it's been a really great experience. I've really loved it. It's been a good day. Weather started a bit iffy, but it's coming right. Well, something huge just jumped straight out of the water. I didn't, I just caught down the corner of my eye. It looked like a huge shark or something. It was massive. Man, you just gotta love when you're out in this, this depth of water, anything can happen. You see big sharks, whales, dolphins, marlin, anything can be jumping, anything that's predatory. Man, 
what a day. Coming up, the notorious West Coast weather makes for some challenging fishing. The beauty. The West Coast is famous for its weather extremes. We're at Westport fishing for sea run browns and overnight the weather had changed for the worse. So today the uh, conditions are a little more challenging. We've um, had heavy rain overnight. Um, our secret spot from yesterday has um, come up and it's in a reasonable state of flood. So um, we're going to head to another spot I know of um, just a little further up the road. And um, hopefully we can get into some nice uh, sea run trout in a smaller river. And. Um, yeah, the weather's supposed to clear. I can just see up here there's some um, snow on the mountain that's fallen overnight. On the way in, we've seen some railway tracks, and Adam tells me that uh, anywhere there's railway tracks, uh, the fishing can be quite phenomenal. So, um, yeah, we'll just uh, take a look over the bridge in a minute and um, see what we can see. The weather was really unpredictable. Pouring one minute, then sunny the next. This would definitely keep things interesting and make the fishing challenging. Too much rain could make the river dirty and unfishable. Just moving around looking for places where the fish might be lying, having a few casts here and there. Hopefully we'll turn one on in a minute. Casting a fly rod with lots of overhanging trees requires some good skills. Torre was doing well, but I managed to donate a few flies to the trees myself. Eventually I was rewarded with a solid strike, and to be honest I'd almost given up. Got one on. Taking a while this morning. This is a beautiful little looking bend. We're fishing the intertidal zone, so it's where the fresh meets the salt. And those brownies, they love this sort of water. Lovely colours here. Look at that. It was a pretty fish, and I was happy to have caught it in this challenging situation. Get my hands wet. Sharp little teeth these brownies have got. But well, I've got myself a fish. It's always a good day when you catch a fish. Well, you just get them in the water, don't have them out too long. Okay. So the rod and reel I'm using here is one of the new Reddington Vapen Blacks. It's a four piece rod which is ideal for me when I'm travelling because I can put it in my um, clothes gear when I hop on the plane and everything and I've got a little Reddington reel on it and interestingly a Rio fly line which is a camouflage fly line so it's sort of brown and green and white and it blends in especially in this tannin coloured water and it's what they call an intermediate line and an intermediate line just sinks ever so slowly which is ideal for swinging these wet flies in, in the shallow water that we're fishing and I'm using about uh, nine foot of tapered leader with about a foot of um, just straight uh, fluorocarbon on the end of it just to keep it uh, nice and subtle and camouflaged. So that's a rig, pretty simple, very effective. The weather eventually got the better of us, so we headed to Westport for a spot of lunch. The weather cleared while we were having lunch, so we headed back to the Buller River mouth. This turned out to be a good decision. Anton hooked a good fish right by the culvert, and now it was trying to get into the willow trees. This was a tricky spot to play a fish. So that's where they've been, we've just been casting miles past them. Which the Yep. Uh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that is nuts. <laughs> a little bit earlier I saw a fish cruise up through the pipe and up under these trees up here. A couple of minutes later it turned and went back down and um, so I had a brainwave and I went and chucked another another fly on, beefed up my tippet. I just let the fly drop down into the um, current and let it suck into the pipe. 
I let out enough line to probably take it two thirds of the way through and I just started slowly stripping it in. And there's some resistance and um, lo and behold here's a trout on the end. Yeah, nice fish. Slightly under that four pound mark maybe. Nice bit of condition on it. Pretty happy with that. Torre took Anton's lead and soon hooked a trout right in front of the culvert as well. Oh, that's cool, Torre just hooked up. Maybe the white bait were hanging around the pipe. Now, it, 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 from where you're from in Norway, people get very excited about a fish like this, wouldn't they? They do indeed, yeah. yeah. You get excited here too, mate. <laughs> people don't even target them over here. No, it's crazy. Look yeah. at this. It's a beauty. Westport had turned on some awesome fishing right in the middle of town. It just shows the West Coast is full of surprises. Fishy Business is proud to support